Guys. Guys. Okay, seriously, don't joke around. Bring me up. Let's go. Guys! So you just saw the newest superhero movie and you feel an inspiration to dig into the wonderful world of comic books. What do you do? How do you start? Where do they even sell comic books anymore? Which comics do you want to read? Here are 10 tips for a beginning comic book collector to get you started on the path to collecting on a budget. Tip number one. Find a theme and follow it. Superheroes have been around for a very long time. There are too many to mention and way too many to follow for a beginning collector. There are also science fiction comics, horror comics, and military adventure comics. The list is endless. It can be a challenge to even take the first step in collecting. What do I even collect? That's why step number one is to find a theme and stick to it. As you progress, you can choose other avenues to explore. But for a beginner on a budget, you need to stay focused on one comic or specific hero. Tip number two, find a home base shop. It used to be that you could get a new comic book at a grocery store or convenience store. This isn't the case anymore. It isn't as easy as it was in the 20th century to get your hands on a comic book. Sometimes you might get lucky, and Walmart might carry an extremely limited selection. Fortunately, most towns have a local comic book shop, and all major cities should. This is why it's important to find a local place to get your comic books. Consider this your home base. You can wander around a bit, but this is the spot you can go to be safe. It's also the launching spot for several of our top 10 tips. Tip number 3. Join a community. Most local comic shops have an eclectic bunch of people that wander in and out. If you're lucky, this group of people can grow into your comic community. Most of the people that are in my group of comic friends either work at my local comic shop or are customers that I met there. This core group of comic collectors has grown into some of my best friends. Having a network of people that you share a hobby with can be priceless. It's like having extra sets of eyes and ears out there looking for cool events and deals. It's also a great place to show off those awesome gems that you acquire as your collection grows. There are groups to join on social media that can have similar benefits. However, just like anything else on the internet, be ready to be annoyed and trolled. Tip number four, start a pull list. What's a pull list you ask? A pull list is a list of comics that you know you'll buy every month. Some stores offer pull list programs where they'll set aside the comics for you each month to ensure that you never miss any issues. Fans like to have pull lists like this because new comics are issued every week, which means that missing a week could mean missing your chance to buy your favorite title. For many readers, missing an issue could mean being unable to continue with the story or missing important information. This also helps comic shops keep from ordering too many comics to languish in the back issue bins. Many local comic shops will offer discounts to pull list customers. My comic shop offers an awesome discount that has saved me a small fortune. Tip number five, start off organized. Comics can accumulate quickly. Whether you've been reading comics for a short time or forever, you can start to accumulate a nice little collection which grows larger with every week or month. The problem is that after a while, it can be difficult to keep track of which can be chaotic and time-consuming if you're looking to reread your favorite issues. To avoid this from happening, keep this from happening, organize your comic book collection from the very beginning. Make sure you have boxes or whatever method you will be storing them ready. If you're bagging and boarding your comics, make sure you've done that before you start organizing. Once your solutions are all sorted out, you need to come up with a plan as to how you're going to organize everything. Tip number six, pace yourself. Rome wasn't built in a day, and you won't build your comic book collection in a day either. You can burn out quickly if you burn the candle at both ends hunting comics. Be patient, despite the popularity of comics, there are many deals to be had in the wild still for collectors that have the right combination of luck, tenacity, and solid research. Most collectors have a few stories about how they got a great gem in a bargain bin or at a swap meet. I got my NYX number 3 first appearance of X-23, and a three for a dollar bin at my local comic shop. 
Tip number seven, catch up on continuity. Remember your motivation for buying comics in the first place. For me, it was a synergistic combination of story and art packaged in an easy to carry book that could one day be a great collectible. Many of the comic book stories I read weren't written around the time I bought the comic. Most superheroes have a long, rich history that can span decades, and there are hundreds of pages of iconic story there for new generations to enjoy. In order to really know a character, you should know their whole story. That's where the community from step number three can come in handy. Most comic shop employees can point you in the direction of trade paperbacks and omnibuses that can get you caught up with a character story arc in no time. Tip number eight, make your list of key books. One of the coolest aspects of collecting comic books is that many of them can be worth money, especially key books. A key issue is an important or essential publication in the title or category in some way. This can be an issue in which the main character is introduced, or one that surrounds an important character's death. The origin of characters or stories can also be considered key issues, and so can pivotal plot lines. You will never catch those books in the wild if you can't spot them, and if you're waiting for someone to spot one for you, the spotter will take the deal or charge you more for it. I found my NYX number 3 by looking over the back of a person sorting through a bargain bin. They rifled right past it. I just waited for them to move on to the next bin and swooped it up. Knowing how to spot the keys from my list has been my biggest asset in growing my collection. Tip number 9. Find local places to spot a deal. There are lots of events that occur all around us that can provide opportunities to score an awesome deal on comic books. Local Comic Shop Day, Halloween Comic Fest, Free Comic Book Day, and Black Friday sales to name a few. Most shops have great sales that accompany these events. You can stay ahead of the curve in finding these events since you have already found a home-based shop and plugged into a community at this point. There are other places besides comic shops to find comic books. Now that you are learning what to look for, you can start searching other avenues to hunt in the wild. Thrift stores, garage sales, estate sales, and swap meets are other local places to search for comic books. I have this down further on the list since you really need to know what you're looking for to be effective in hunting on these grounds. Also, these shops might not know what they have, which is a double-edged sword. You can get a deal, but these books can be thrashed and pretty much destroyed since their owners threw them around and they got bent and smashed into bins and boxes. Tip number 10. Subscribe to an entertaining and informative YouTube channel. We have a crew of collectors and have been producing content for years about collecting comic books, toys, and other pop culture phenomena. Our weekly shows, Comic Cave Let's Go, which tells you which comics are the best new releases to pick up, and Comic Kids, that can get kids excited about reading comics and expose them to current new releases for children, can help guide you to make your own picks. We also have different comic convention exclusive shows, Tory reviews, vintage Tory restorations, and movie reviews. We aim to keep our subscribers entertained and informed about comics and the culture that surrounds them. If you have any tips that I missed or suggestions for beginning collectors, please feel free to share them in the comments below. I hope these were informative or at least entertaining. Don't forget to subscribe for more information about collecting and we'll see you next time.